Now you can also listen to us on your favorite podcast with just a search, Faith Temple and Cog. Listen on the go with your favorite streaming platforms, like YouTube, Spotify, Audible, Apple, Amazon Music, Google, Facebook, and Anchor Podcasts. If you would like more information about us, you can visit our website at www.ftnfcog.org. Good afternoon, Saints. Good afternoon. Amen. Good evening. Welcome into this place. Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire to abide in the praises of your people as we lift our hands. As we lift our heart, as we offer up a praise unto your name, welcome into this place, welcome into this broken vessel, you desire to abide in the praises of your people as we lift our hands, as we lift our hearts, as we offer up a praise unto your name. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. 
time to thank you, Lord. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. you praise him praise him praise him praise him Jesus blessed Savior he's worthy to be To the going down of the same. Jesus is worthy. Yes, he is worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Why don't you praise him? Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, bless the Savior, He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, He is. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God, amen. Hallelujah. Giving God all the glory and all the people. We're going to ask the elder right to lead, open up in prayer. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father God. We bless you, God. We thank you one more time, Father, for our opportunity to tell you thank you, Father. We thank you for what you have yeah. done for us, oh God. Yes. Hey, God, we bless you and we honor you right now, Father. Oh, God, for the word that you're going to bring forth on tonight, Father. We thank you right now. Touch Bishop's heart, oh, God. Touch him every more, oh, God. Strengthen him right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, that, oh, God, the word would touch our hearts. Father, we ask you right now, God, to touch everyone on the side of my voice. God, we pray healing and victory right now in the name of Jesus, Father. We thank you right now, God, for our family, oh, God, that you, oh, God, that we intercede for on their behalf, Father. Oh, God, we thank you, oh, God, for the healing and deliverance, oh, God, of our family. God, we pray right now, and we continue to thank you for faith to bless a whole God. In the name of Jesus, God, what you have for us, oh, God, we thank you, oh, God, even for the building, oh, God, we thank you, oh, God, for the material that you are giving us God, but we most of all we thank you for the things that you are doing in ourselves and our spirit, Father. We honor you, God. We bless you, God. We ask you to touch now cog as a whole, Father. Touch uh, Pastor Grant, God, Mother, oh God. Touch all the pastors, oh God. God, strengthen them right now, God, for your work, Father, in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you right now. We bless you, oh Father. Move upon us like never before, God. Let us do what you have called us to do, Father, in the name of Jesus, God. We bless you, we honor you, and we magnify you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you, God. Thank amen. You, God. Amen. Amen. Truly, we give God all the glory and all the honor tonight. Amen. He is a God worthy of all praise. I pray that everybody had a wonderful holiday. Amen. Since uh, uh, the last time we met, amen, we was at uh, the baptism service. Our brother Jonathan, amen, down in Norfolk. Hallelujah. So uh, this is our first time being together since then. Hallelujah. And the last time we talked that we're teaching on was focus on you know, what you're doing rather than what you're doing. Amen. Hallelujah. We came out of the book of Jim, uh, First Chronicles, the fourth chapter. Hallelujah. And uh, the ninth and tenth verse. Hallelujah. So since it's been uh, about, about, two, about two weeks, almost two weeks, amen, we are going to see if y'all can give me a review. <laughs> of what we studied. Amen. Amen. We talked about your bads. I'll give you a few seconds to call up the memory. 
Amen. If y'all can just tell us, amen. Uh, just a I ain't asking anybody to go preach and go be deep in it. They just bring us up to snuff about what we talked about in Jabez, in reference to Jabez in uh, First Chronicles, the fourth chapter, ninth, uh, tenth verse. Amen. He was one of the brothers, and he was an honorable brother, uh, and he was pleasing in God's eyes. Okay, yes, yes, we can hear you, Mother. I yeah. remember about Jabaz. Oh, okay. <laughs> he was an honorable uh, brother, and he was uh, pleasing in God's eye, and God, and and call on God when he really needed to be blessed indeed and that thy brothers uh, was a keeper from evil he in law and he, God's uh, granted him his request whatever he requested God regret re, um, granted him praise God amen anybody else? Nobody else. One of the things that stood out for me was you talked about how prior to Javaz's story coming in, it was like it was out of place because there was this genealogy about who was begat and all of that. And why was that put there? But it talks about his mother said that he was an honorable man. And even though his mother gave him a name that meant sorrow. He didn't walk in sorrow, but he called upon the Lord. And I, I took a note where you said that uh, about being a new creation in Christ. So even though he had that identity, of course, his mother in the name he gave, she gave him, but he had his also his own identity and who he was in the Lord. So that was what stood out in my mind that he recognized God in his life and ask the Lord for what he needed to enlarge his coast that he wanted the Lord to do something in his life and he believed him to do it. Yeah, and I just want to say Mother Smith did hit one part that I wanted to say was about he didn't live up to his name. And he was, uh, he didn't let that be, uh, define who he was and God blessed him in that. And then also I was thinking about what you just said earlier was focus on what you are doing instead of what you are doing. I missed that part last week. I was it, the other week I just wrote that part down. But um Yeah, I must I, I need some clarification on that too, please. Yeah. <laughs> I I, miss, I had to write that down because it sounded it sounded good, so I had to write it down. And I must I must have missed that I must have missed that part in the first lesson. But um it just just um him not being what people thought he should be, and God blessed him, his his coast. I know the songs say in, in territories and and all of that, but God blessed his coast. And I remember you were talking about um, his mindset when you was talking uh, about that um, and, and stuff like that. So yeah, my, my brain rolling. Amen. Amen. The, the the title that I gave it, mother and uh, elder, right, and everybody else, uh, focus on what you are becoming. Focus on what you're becoming rather than what you're doing. That's the, the title of the same lesson that we've been talking about. Yeah. Amen. Oh. And 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 so uh, everybody has really summed up uh, what we discussed uh, about the uh, we don't have to accept uh, what the world dictate to us, what we are and who we should be. Hallelujah. And, and Jobaz shook off the name of uh, the title that they had gave him, a man that causes sorrow and causes pain. Uh, uh, he shook it off and turned to God. And uh, in God's eyes, he uh, was an honorable, more honorable than his brother. And we talked about how honorable something is and that, that's something in God's eyes way more than what man's honorability is. So in our words, Joy did not want to accept uh, what man had for him and 
the title that they had given him. So he turned to God and God gave him a uh, new, uh, and that's what we talked in a new creation. When we come to Christ, we are new creation. We are new creatures. Old things are passed away and new things, the, the new things that we have uh, when we are the children of God, amen. And, and we gotta start acting and talking it uh, like uh, we are, amen. The Bible said it. Uh, we have the spirit of adoption that we cry out, Abba, Father. I know it just sounds good, but uh, uh, if I'd ask the elder right who his parents are, in the natural, he would say uh, his mom and dad name. Hallelujah. But we can also, uh, because we are new creatures and we turn into God and he has made us new creatures, we can say, uh, I'm a son of God. Hallelujah. We, we get that. I'm a Christian. Huh? Man, it's all right to be a Christian, but I think I'd rather be the son and or daughter of God. Amen. It sounds, it gives me, a hallelujah, uh, uh, something that this is who I am now. Hallelujah. Uh, and, and this is who I'm, God is making me to be. Hallelujah. So in Boaz, we, we talked about how he was honorable then. His mother gave him a name that made him, that identified him as being sorrow. And we back then, we, in those days, when they gave you a name, that is what you were meant to be. Hallelujah. Remember that we gave an illustration of Jacob, deceiver, name, name, deceiver. And he went through his whole life being a deceiver until he wrestled with God or he wrestled with the angel. Oh God, amen. And uh, the, the, he, Jacob told the angel, I'm not going to let go until you bless me. And he said, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, no longer will your name be Jacob, but it shall be Israel. Hallelujah. And Israel is prince of God. Amen. So then uh, God recognizes our flaws. And so he has to change us and gives us something in this scripture, amen, to that who we are now. That's why we got to know the scriptures. And the scripture tells us that we are sons of God. We, one of my favorite scriptures uh, when God gave it to me was, Behold what man of love that I shared upon you, that you can be called the son of God. Amen. So uh, we have the right to say we are sons of God. Hallelujah. But with that right, we have to live a different life than we did when we was in the world. Jabez recognized that he turned to God. And we're talking about here, turn to God. He said, uh, he said, God, you got to bless me indeed. We discussed that already. And he said, enlarge my coast. And I told you spiritually, uh, Jabez was looking for spiritual stuff, and it has to be in his mind and his heart. Amen. It had to be enlarged, amen, so that he would be focused on territory any longer, but he focused on spiritual was my mindset has got to be changed. I got to think bigger than what I'm thinking now. I got to uh, uh, be in my heart that I'm more than what man say I am. And I can trust God. He trusted God for everything that he was doing. Amen. So the next thing that we have there uh, in uh, showing the humility of Jabez, amen. Jabez he said that, let your hand be with me. And I'll read the scripture. And, goes, and it's out in the 10th verse and it says, and that thy hand might be with me. And that thy hand might be with me. Hallelujah. We pray, and I know we pray. Hallelujah. But how many go to the point and say, uh, why, when you know that God's going to do something for you, amen, and you, you, you've been, been out here and you've seen when your people get blessed, they kind of forget about God. When the good times roll, we just roll with the good times. Hallelujah. But Javed did something different here. He wanted God to know that uh, I can't do it on my own. I, I, I don't want you to, to think that I'm just praying for you, just bless me. But he said, let the hand be with me. That was, let your hand continually be with me in what I do. When you, when you, what you have making me to be, uh, what I'm, what I'm made, causing me to do, 
let your hand be with me. Do not with, don't take your hand away. Now, I remember the scripture, in the scripture, John David preached, uh, uh, wrote, I uh, said, don't ever let your the spirit depart from me. Because once you recognize the importance of God in your life, and we pray to God for, for God to have that we want to trust him, but then we kind of back up once we get started getting blessed and everything, we kind of back up and, and, and we forget about God. And here, Jabez took it even further. I bless me indeed, and then let your hand stay with me. Keep your hand on me. I need your hand. I can't do it on my own. Hallelujah. And so we sometimes in this modern day, how do we get educated and we get uh, all the knowledge and books and things and, and we know a whole lot of things. We have read the Bible. We know what the scriptures say. But how do you, but we kind of think we can do it on our own uh, when uh, uh, things arise. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, when you working around or doing what on your job is a routine you already know how to do it god bless you to get the knowledge but then you get a routine and you kind of forget that god is the one that you got to continue to lean on amen so your bad wasn't going to forget that and just many of christians today we gotta cannot forget what god has done for us he's still developing us he's still making us to be the men the sons and daughters that he called us to be. So we got to continue to his hand be in our lives. And when you don't want God's hand or don't want God to, and then something, then you, <laughs> you're ignoring God. So you're being, when you say that, you're being disobedient to God. God has to reign in your life. Uh, David put it on the shape like this, creating me a new heart. Cleanse me. Cleanse my heart. And you got to try my heart see that it's dirty i submit to you that i'm dirty and i'm i'm unworthy of your blessings uh, and i can only do these things because of you god so you keep your hand in my life and i hope you understand what i'm trying to say but uh many times uh we uh today the modern church or the modern uh society think that we can do it we can do anything we can put a man on the moon we plan, they planning now to go to, to, to the moon, put a base station on the moon, and then jump to Mars. Man, it's just, I can do it. We can do it all. Hallelujah. But hallelujah, I, <laughs> I ain't seen him yet try to start walking on water, though. <laughs> I ain't seen him yet start parting the Red Sea. <laughs> Amen. Uh, because they think this, these things are foolishness. But see, I trust God. And that's just J. Baz did, amen. He believed that there's nothing God can't do. Enlarge. If you stop thinking bigger and you stop thinking and putting it all together, who God is making you to be, you realize, as, as Jesus said, you do greater works than me. You the signs and wonders will follow my disciples. Uh, there, there, there's too much that we, it's nothing that we can't do in Jesus Christ. Because the scripture tells us that. We, I, we can do all things through Christ who strengthened us. You, you know that's over in Philippians. So if we start thinking about that, there is no boundaries on us when we yield to God so he can make us what we want to be, what he wants us to be. We have to submit unto God. And the times are, uh, I know everybody, now y'all heard me saying this last few Sundays and Tuesdays, time is uh, of an essence in my spirit, amen. So we have to be, be more diligent about reading and studying God's words that we can be the men and women God calls us to be. People are dying and, and, and they can't receive the word because we are stuck in our uh, Christianity, uh, formalism. Uh, uh, we, we're, we're stuck in uh, this is how we used to do it. Well, we didn't never did no Zoom before. I had never did it. I didn't I didn't know where all these options was available to me. So obviously, the world is doing things different. We got to adjust according to the word of God. Now, I'm not saying that what the word said, we can't forsake it. So we got to, can't forsake our similar ourselves together. So we got to work within the, uh, the things that God has given us in this new technology 
to get the word to people so that they may be saved. Jabez said, God, I can only do this if you keep your hand with me. In other words, he said, I'm going to trust you every step of the way, God. Can we say we are trusting God in every step of the way so that we can lean on him when he tells us to do this or do that? When it don't look right to us and looks like right to the world, but we got to do, 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 do things according to what's right in God's eyes. Keep your hands on me. Don't let your hand depart from me. We have in the new scripture said he had never leave us in the new testament, never leave us nor forsake us. Man, can you see, understand something? I hope you're in the, can start to see the understanding where the old testament said we have a better, <laughs> better than the, uh, uh, better than, than the old prophets and preachers. We have Jesus. We have been baptized in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit won't leave us. He was given to us a gift from God that has been given to us to lead and guide us every step of the way. So we don't have to worry. We got to surrender to him now. And say, don't let don't let your hand depart. I keep your hands on me, but we got the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I, I'm a lot of saints. Think about it. On the, what did Jesus tell him? Go to the upper room and stay there until you speak in tongues. Is that what he said? No. I hope y'all say no. <laughs> no, that's not what he's saying. He said, go to the upper room, stay there until you've been in. Do it with power. <laughs> Preachers, churches nowadays, they want to emphasize that cloven tongues set on them and they spoke in tongues. Hallelujah. But they forget about when Peter came out of there and John came out of there. They had been in do with power where Peter would preach it and he said, Hey, no, 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 we ain't drunk. This is that that the prophet Joel prophesied about. Hallelujah. That I'm going to pour out my spirit upon. All flesh, your sons and your daughters, everybody. So you have the power. You got to know that God is creating you to be a something special in his life. This mind, this heart has got to be turned to God wholeheartedly. You can't hem and haw with this power that you have on the inside. It is trying to teach us that you, have, you are more than what man say you are. They told Jabez, you were just a man that brings sorrow around. You're a man that brings pain around. But Jabez turned to God, and God said, ah, oh, no, 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 no. You, in my eyes, Jabez, you are more honorable than him. And if, when you get that feeling that God saying, don't worry about what they say to you about you in the world. You are my child, and I've given you power. I put my spirit, the spirit of the living God, I put that inside of you. That's why you can say no weapon formed against me shall prosper. That's why you can say every tongue that rises up against me shall be defeated. That's because you have the power. That's what Jeremiah says. It's like fire <laughs> living on the inside. Of I shall be my bones because you have power, saints. Jabez recognized God. I got to turn God. God don't don't live it. You got to recognize God put your spirit inside of you. And so then you can walk in the power that God has given you to witness to this world about Jesus. And he died for people's sins so that the world can know that there is a God. We have that power. And if the signs and wonders are going to follow you, his disciples, don't be worried about what people think. What do God want you to do? Yeah. What is God creating you to be yeah. rather than what you're going to do? God is creating you and each one of us have a se separate identity with him. And think about it. God knows your new name. I don't know it. He knows my name. He tells me that I'm going to be changed. But he, and my name is <laughs> it's going to be a different name than what it is now. So I'm going to trust God. I'm going to look to God and trust God for everything. So you got to you got to trust him as Jabez did, and you got to know to pray your prayer, but trust God. Don't win to get good times. Ooh, forget about God. 
let me go do it, man. I, I, I've been blessed. I, I, I got uh, to, whatever you ask for. And then you forget about God and go on back doing what you was doing. The bread, his mind was made up. I'm going to trust God. Keep your hands in my life, God. Don't let your hands depart from me. Keep thy hands. The scripture says, thy hand might be with me. Then he turns around to the next, next part of that. He said, keep me from evil. You don't do you remember Jesus said something about that over in the New Testament? Uh, and then when that Lord, that prayer that he said, This is how you ought to pray. Then it says, Keep me from evil. I hope y'all are saying yes. 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 But it says, Keep me from evil. This is back in the Old Testament. Jabez knew what was going to be around him. What's around us, saints? Evil. What's, what's tempting lies and testing? What looks good to you around you? It's all kinds of evil around you. It's all kinds of temptations all around you. The flesh wants to do it. The flesh ain't die. This, 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 this flesh is still the same. Your, your old way of thinking is just right there on the edge, just waiting for an opportunity to be in charge again. Hallelujah. And you had the right. You got the right. Not God. God don't want God can hold you as long as you want to be held. But if you don't want to be held and you drift back to what you want to do, that's on you, not God. Because God says, the scripture says, he'll never, nobody be able to pluck you out of his hand. But if you make that choice to go back and, 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 and satisfy the flesh, then that's on you, not God. Amen? So uh, Jabez said well, they, they keep, that thou keep me from evil. Saints, God will keep us. God will keep us every step of the way. He's trying to make you to be a person that he called you to be. He's not a doctor, not a, a big time lawyer, all these things, these, these are occupations. But God said, I need you to be my child. I need you to walk in the power and the anointing that I have given each one of you. Yes. And we got to walk in that power, not giving in to the temptations all around us. James said we should be counted, counted all joy. Uh, let me read that real quick. So I want to get over to James, the uh, first chapter. Read that particular. I'm turning to it. James said what? Uh, Count it all joy when you fall in divers temptation. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith work in patience. But let patience have its perfect what work that you may be perfect and entire, not wanting nothing. <laughs> Can you imagine when you are walking with God to the point where you are perfect and entire, not wanting anything because you trust in God. He's going to supply all your needs. He's going to take care of you every step of the way. Yes, it's, it, it's a different way of thinking than we, what we are thinking now. We have to think that way. That's why he said, enlarge your mind. Your mindset got to change. You have, we have got to change and depend on God every step of the way. Be and perfect in, in the scriptures, mature. So we'll be more mature, not wanting anything. So we got to get to that point where we trust God. Trust God. I'm facing things now uh, that I don't know how we're going, how we're going to work, work it out. But I'm trusting that I don't need to know how God's going to do it. All I know is He's going to do it by by whatever means He does it. It's going to get done. Does God use sinners to bring back to get His people right? Yes, He does. He proved it over in the Old Testament. How many? How many? King of Babylon did he use? The kings of Assyrian did he use? He used all of them to get what? The people to get be where he wanted them to be. So things around here, kind of like God's working something inside of you. He's working something out in your life to make you perfect, to make you bring you to maturity. When I was a child, uh, you, you, I didn't think these kind of ways I think now. But now that I'm a mature adult, not all the way mature, but mature adult, I can see things better and understand things better. In the spiritual realm, when I like when I told you when I first got saved, I had my Bible in my hand 
And when it said the, the word of God was the sword, I mean, I was on, on security and I had my Bible and I felt that I was being attacked. And I took my Bible and was swinging in the air. See, that's an immature. That's somebody don't know <laughs> what the words say. I just knew the word was sword. So I just, that they told me the word was sword. So I took the Bible and I'm just getting off. I'm cutting all the stuff all around me. See, immature. But now that I know the word, now that I have grew into the word and I understand and, and, and I have the uh, full knowledge of the Holy Spirit, I don't have to cut nowhere. I ain't got to pretend like I'm boxing. I just speak words out of my mouth and know it's done. So I rebuke it and command it to get away from me. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. So I can do it. So I'm going to go on down here. Uh, but let page uh, the fifth verse. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God that give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Hallelujah. Whatever wisdom and knowledge you need, God said, you ask me. See, you, you, you all said Jabez uh, was good. God was honorable. Jabez knew who God was. Most of y'all say, I know who God is. Well, when you ask God for wisdom and you believe that he's going to answer your prayer and you, <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> you ask God for wisdom and you know he's going to give it to you. Some of us won't ask for that wisdom. We don't even want understanding. We just want understanding of a little bit just to get us by. But when you ask for wisdom and understanding and knowledge, God opens it up to you. Remember we talked about being enlightened? God's going to enlighten us to the knowledge and wisdom of him. Uh, uh, opening our eyes, open our ears. We have to surrender to God. He will give you the wisdom. He will give you nothing. You don't need to have uh, this one or that. You have the spirit of the Holy. You have the Holy Spirit inside of you, Amen. To teach you and guide you. This is what James is trying to tell us. Hallelujah. Uh, and let uh, I want to get down to the the part where it says the problem that the church, the church today have a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. Jobez was not double minded. He knew who his God was. He knew who he trusted. He didn't care what his mama said about him. He didn't care what his brother said about him. He didn't care what society said about him. I'm walking with God. We, the saints today, are double-minded. They want the world, and they want God. You can't have the world and God. The Bible tells me that the world is enmity to God. So now if God calls the world his enemy. Why do we want the world to try to blend the world and God and make it one? Can't do it, saints. You got to choose one or the other. What did Joshua, uh, uh, Joshua say? Choose you this day? And I'm not trying to be that. But we got to make choices. Your best trust in God. Everybody liked your best prayer. But look what Jabez, Jabez said, God, you keep your hand on me. Bless me indeed. Uh, keep your hand on me. Keep me from evil. We want to be blessed, but we want to go in, dive into the good stuff. Uh, we want to keep the evil from us, the, the killing and the robbing and all that. We want to keep that evil from us, but we don't like, we want to, as Pastor Paul says, that secret sin. I'm, I'm going to hold on to that. I'm, I'm not them them strongholds, the ones that they don't nobody know about what you know. Amen. So we want to hold on to them strongholds. And the Bible tells us we got to, what, pull down those strongholds. Who can pull it down? You can't pull them down. You cannot. We cannot pull them down. The spirit of the Holy Spirit got to come down and pull down those strongholds. Casting down those imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's, that's the word of God. Pull them down. Surrender it all to God. Your bed said, I got to surrender to you. You got to keep the evil from me. This mind, I'm a man. <laughs> and you women, some of y'all are women, some of them are men. We see things in the street. We see women in the street, and you see men in the street. Them old thoughts is right there. You know they're right on the verge, but you've got to rebuke them. 
you got to cast them out of your mind. You just and keep on going, ignoring them, and keep. Get, it's all kind of the lottery. Six hundred billion dollars, six hundred million billion dollars. Temptation, all it takes is one dollar. And I'm going to do this for the church. I'm going to do that for the church. That sounds good. But where you putting your trust? Where's your faith? The Bible says you got to walk by faith and not by sight. See, it's the little small things that get us caught up in the world. This is what Jabez is trying to say. Keep me from evil. Keep this evil from out of my mind. Keep this evil from getting into my heart. Hallelujah. That I can trust you, God. I'm trusting you every step of the way. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm trusting God that you already done it. Amen. And so with your bad trust and keep the evil from me. So I don't be double-minded. When you're unstable, that means you can <laughs> unstable house, <laughs> you're rocking. You, you, you're not standing on the you go this way one minute, you go that way the next minute. You got to be stable in God. God say what? I'd rather you be what? Hot or cold. Don't come to me lukewarm. I don't need nobody lukewarm. You choose you. You're going to be for me or you're going to be against me. And that's what we have to do. Jabez made that decision. And he trusted God, the God of Abraham, the same God that we trust in. Amen. And we have the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us to all truth. <laughs> how, how, how many of y'all tried to fast and, we, and, and, you, and you can't fast? And when you get weak and you want to give in, then the Holy Spirit said, no, 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 don't do it. Trust God. Read the word. That's what it's there for. Because the temptation of the smell food, my mom then went out today and they, they came back with that, that chicken. <laughs> and, and, and even though it was wrapped up in a container, you know that chicken they get at Walmart and already cooked? That, uh, Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? The, 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 what is it called? Rotisserie chicken. Rotisserie chicken. It's already packed. They walked in and, and Vicky said, you had to get the go. So I go out there and man, I could smell the chicken. And I said, well, I could just get a one little piece nugging. <laughs> what the Holy Spirit say? A little leaven. Uh, we had somebody had mentioned that to me this week, the last week. A little leaven. That's the first scripture came back to my mind. Yeah. The who did that? Who brought it back to my mind? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost. The, 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 the one that's going to lead and guide me. The one that I got to say, your way, God. How many times we pray, uh, Holy Spirit, you rule through this vessel from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. This is the one that say, don't do it. Don't do it. Can I, would I override it? Yes, I can override it. But when I override it, I'm saying, God, I'm, I can't trust you to get me through this day. No, no, no. I got to trust him. Jabez trusted God. Keep me from evil. I'm trusting you, God. You got to keep me from evil. And that's what God did. And that's why he trusted God. We have to do the same thing. Temptation is there. Temptation is there. You got to choose. You got to choose. And this is what you, we've been studying on God. I told you, focus on what you're becoming instead of what you're doing. If you focus on what God is making you do, what you're becoming in God, that'll keep you on your mind set on him. He's making you. He's making you. He's causing us to be in fellowship on Zoom. He's allowing us to, 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 to the word to get out. We have to what? Trust God. We don't know how we're going to get a building. We don't know how, when it's going to get there. But we do know one thing. God is doing it. And I'm trusting him. Hallelujah. And when the building get built, and, we, and when we get it all together, when I when somebody said, man, you built it, I mean, all I can do is pull my pockets out. It wasn't never no money come out of my pocket. It wasn't never no money in the pocket. But I'm blessed because my God, hallelujah, felt us worthy and gave us that responsibility to erect a building that we could have people come and do Bible study and to come into God in there and praise God. That's why this building in here. God ain't coming back for the church. 
the, 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 the building, he's coming back for us. The building ain't going to meet him in the sky. We're going to meet him in the sky. The ones that are uh, sanctified, the ones that are holy and righteous and keeping all manner of righteousness, we're the ones that are going to meet him in the sky. We're the church. We're the bride. Hallelujah. So we got to know that we're becoming something special in God's eyes. And we have to trust God every step of the way. Temptation is there. Evil is there. But you know, when you ask God to keep his hand on you, his hand is on you. Hallelujah. You had, like I told you earlier, you have something special. You've been endured with power. Hallelujah. Not because you can speak in tongues, not because God gave you that private language with him, but because of the Holy Spirit had come in your life, you can do things that nobody in the world won't understand why you're doing. Why, why is, why you go up uh, Route 1 instead of going up uh, 95? 95 is faster. Well, Spirit told me to go Route 1. I don't know what's happening on 95, but I know if I go this way, I'm trusting God. You understand? It's the little thing that we got to trust God in. The little thing, j is trusting God. The way the world was dictating, you ain't nothing but sorrow. You ain't nothing but pain. Man, no, please shut up. Just shut up. Yeah. Can you imagine somebody drilling into you day in and day out? Yes, we can imagine. Because we, the, the, we have we, we've been living in a nation that's prejudiced. And we've been raised in prejudice. And we've been told that we can't do this. And in our limits on which, because your race, you got limitations. You can't get a good education. You ain't, uh, you a thug. You are uh, anything negative. What's going to break that train of thought in life today? Huh? Salvation. Hallelujah, my God. Trusting in God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That I can, God said, I, I, because of the spirit that's given, I'll present you before kings, people of high places. Yeah, I'll bring you before them. What changes that? The spirit of God. Trusting in God. God changes all that, who I am. The man, the uh, pe people of different nationality say, I'm, I'm, not, I'm a black guy, I can't do this, I can't do that. But God, Jesus Christ said, I can do all things through him. Hallelujah. Jesus said that if I just ask, hallelujah, in my name, he's going to talk to the Father, huh, my Lord, my God, and going to pray to the Father for you that your joy, your joy might be made full. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's what we, that's how mm, I advocate it. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God, hallelujah. We got Jesus, hallelujah. I tell you all the time, when you got all three of these people working for you, how can you lose? You got the Almighty God, you got the Son of God, and you got the Spirit of God, all working with what? To make you the men and women God called you to be. My Lord, my God, hallelujah. That's all right with me, hallelujah. I, I think I'll let him mold me, put me on the potter's circle, hallelujah, form me, shake me, hallelujah, which how you want me to be, God, hallelujah, I don't mind you taking a little bit off here and taking a little bit off there, hallelujah, my Lord, my God, I wish you would take some off in the front here, I'll be all right, hallelujah, <laughs> but, but you know what I'm trying to say, hallelujah, let God put you on the potter's wheel, let God spin you and then take and mold and shape you to what he wants you to be, not what the world wants. Not what the world wants. You can't be what the world wants. If you fall in that gap, the world say you can't do this and worse, it, then you're going to be lost. Trust God. Trust God. Hallelujah. Let me get back over to my scripture here. Anybody got any questions or anything? No questions. All right. All right. Uh, the the uh, fifth thing and the last thing. Keep me from grief. I, I couldn't understand why. Why bad say uh, keep me? He said, let me read it so you won't say I'm making it up. Thy hand might be with me, and the thou would keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. Now I looked and said, why would the blessing be on him? And he asked God, but he said, so it don't grieve me. So he won't grieve me. So that it don't grieve me. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit gave me the scripture said, much given, much required. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, uh, you can get, you, then they started revealing things to me, how people get a whole lot of, a whole lot of stuff. 
and they grieve, burdened down. They don't, don't have happiness. They don't have joy. They, they, they got all this money. They got all these things and toys and gadgets and everything. And I'm happy. The wisdom of Jabez said, you're going to bless me indeed. Keep your hand on me. Hallelujah. Don't let, keep me from evil. Yes, hallelujah. Enlarge my coast. I might got to get them all in order. And then he says, don't let it grieve me. My Lord. That's wisdom, saints of God. I know I didn't pray, but Lord bless me. I ain't never thought about the grief that's going to come with the blessing. Hallelujah. That there's going to be some problems coming along with it. Hallelujah. Until you start looking at it now. I said, oh, no, you got to keep, don't let it, this, the blessing that you give me, don't let it be a hindrance. Don't let it grieve me to the point where I wish I didn't have it. And you, I know y'all have we'd have been in that situation to see other people been in that situation. But your bad said, hey, don't you, I know you're going to bless me. Don't let it grieve me. Hallelujah. Now, when you get grieved, another thing you have to talk about, when you get grieved, what's going to happen to the people around you? How are you going to make them feel? They're they, they going to be grieved. They're going to be, man, what's going on? Because your attitude has changed. You, you, you got all the now, you got uh, all the problems that come along with you you being so you're projecting onto them your grief, your sorrow, your problems. How do you don't you're not speaking the way you used to speak? You're not speaking and trusting God because you're trying now to God, you bless me with this. Why the, uh, uh, you you murmuring and complaining? Hallelujah. Your bad God put this space, this word in here for us to see this right in the midst. I told you, right in the midst of all this genealogy. He put your bears right there. Bang. Let them read that. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, let, let them do a, a, a commercial break right here. Let them read about this, this young man right here that trusted me. Hallelujah. He said, don't grieve me. Saints, we can't let things around us be blessing by God. Grieve us. Listen to what your bear said. Don't let it grieve me. Because it's going to affect the people around me. Hallelujah. I got to keep Trust in God every step of the way. I'm going to stay humble. It ain't me that's doing this. God is I'm going to stay submissive unto God. I'm going to trust God every step of the way. <laughs> when I get the blessings, it's because of God. I'm going to keep my eyes on him. Not on the stuff I got. Because if God gave it, God, who can take it away? God can take it away. I can give it. I can take it. Yeah. Yeah, that's God. He's sovereign. <laughs> he does what he wants, when he wants. And how he won. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I'm going to say, don't, don't let it grieve me. Let me continue to praise you. Let me stay humble. Let me stay submissive unto your word. Let me stay submissive to the Holy Spirit. Let, let it lead, continue to lead and guide me. Let me not focus on what you, you're blessed, but let me focus on you bless me this to, that I can be do something better for you. He didn't, he, it wasn't, he didn't want no large coach for himself. He wanted it because I can do, do things that God wanted me to do. Hallelujah. The world already has stereotyped yes. Christians, the so-called Christians. Yes. The born again, the uh, baptized in the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit, endured with power. See, they can't put no stigma on you because you don't listen to that. You know what we listen to? We go with the word. Hallelujah. That's not in the word. Hold up, hold up. Now you can tell that to him over there or her over there because they believe that. But see, I got somebody, my daddy told me different. My daddy, the one I trust in, the one tell me walk by faith, I don't need to have your stamp of approval on nothing. All I need him to say, Ray was an honorable, more honorable than his brother. <laughs> And that's all I need. Hallelujah. Uh, I don't care what my mama say. I don't care what my wife say. If God say, Ray, he was more honorable than his brother. Saints of God, I'm, 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 I'm I walk on cloud right then. Hallelujah. That's what we got to go for. Focus on what we're becoming. Focus on what we're becoming. Focus on what we're becoming, not what you are doing. Not on these little things all around you. I'm becoming a man of God. I haven't arrived all the way yet. 
Paul said, hallelujah. He was a man of God. Hallelujah. Everybody strive about be like Paul, be like, be like Jesus, be like you. No, Paul said, hey, I ain't there yet. In his scriptures, he said, I ain't there yet. But I'm pressing. I ain't gonna let nothing stop me. I'm pressing. I'm pressing to the high, the mark of the high calling. I'm pressing. Hallelujah. I'm pressing. I'm trying to be what God wants me to be. He's forming me, and I'm going to trust him. I believe God is going to bless me indeed. I believe God is enlarging my coast. Hallelujah. I believe God that he's going to keep his hand on me. I believe God that he's going to uh, let that evil uh, come nigh me. I believe God. Hallelujah, that he's just, and it's not going to grieve me. You know why I can say all that? Before I read about Jabez, he gave me Psalm 91. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> Dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. Hallelujah. That he's going to say, what? No famine, no sickness, no diseases shall come nigh who? Me. Now, y'all, you got, you, you got the word. You got to know that word meant for you. But this word, that nine Psalm 91, meant for me. I took it in my heart. I don't expect no sickness, no diseases to come nigh me. He said, I see a thousand on the right, 10,000 on the left. They're going to fall, but it won't come nigh me. People want to encourage that. Well, you got to do No, I'm trusting God. I got to trust his word. It cannot come back void. I spoke it out of my mouth. It cannot come back void. The prophet uh, uh, Elijah said, it shall not rain for what? Three and a half years. God honored what he said out of his mouth. He, it shall not rain. He probably prayed and didn't rain again. What did he tell us over in the day? He is a man like you and me. He prayed to God. He trusted God. You and I can tr have the same privileges to trust God. And God will do work things out in your life. But, but you got to have this heart on by God. You got to let the Holy Spirit rule your life. You got to trust him every step of the way. It sounds good when you're bad. We read the lesson. There's two little scriptures there. And it sounds good when we read all the other scriptures. That gives us uplifting us. But now is the time. God needs to, to his holy people. His sanctified believers to trust him. Just because the world is going a different way than we're going. What's that uh, uh, the apostle said, or uh, somebody said, we swimming upstream and they floating by downstream and it's going rapid. And it's hard swimming upstream and you're going to be getting tired. But God said, you trust me, you trust him, and we'll make it, saints. We'll make it. Don't forget about the world. You got to trust God. These times that we're in, I can't say that because there's some things that haven't not come to pass, but I believe we're coming into the last and evil days. Hallelujah. And we're going to need, God need his people more than ever to get his word <coughs> to this dying world. This world is dark. And we're the light of the world. We're the salt of the earth. They're not going to want to hear us. They, they're going to talk. They're going to ostracize. They, they're going to talk about it. They're going to do anything they don't want to say. Anything, don't want to know nothing about what you're saying, but you still got to say, <laughs> but God said, uh, yeah, the, God said, you're going to believe a lie before you believe the truth. This in the word. You, you, you rather hear the good things in your ears than you, than you hear the, the truth. It's in his word. And, 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 and then we got to let him know that everybody professing Christianity or salvation, what the word said. Everybody that, that are saying, they're saying, Lord, Lord, <laughs> they ain't saved. They ain't going to make it. Hallelujah. It's a whole, we can see this thing coming to pass. We can see things happening. People faking it. You can't fake it, saints. We, God needs people that's going to be just like the Job ads. That's trusting him. That's more honorable to him. Not to anybody's friends or more honorable to him. And that's what it's going to take for us to get this word up. Trying time is going to be there. And it's going to be time where you, you might be facing that uh, life and death situation. But you're going to have to stay with this word. We cannot deviate from it. As, uh, as my uh, elder Proctor, on the, we talk about 
people change got all kinds of interpretations of this Bible. I mean, I read one. I I, I, I don't know. They changed the whole the whole meaning of the scripture. And I said, and people are reading this, think that it's the Bible. Can you understand why God said, I need my people who are called by my name? I need you to pray. I need you to turn. I need you to seek my face. Because what? We're in a world of decept- accepting anything. That's what my, my grandson told me and my, you know, everybody in the household, he in college, but he don't read no books. He listens to what people say. He go along with it. Well, if they say that's what I'm going to do. What, 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 what? You got to know this for yourself. You got to read the word of God. You got to study this word of God. Hallelujah. What does the scripture say? Study to show thyself approved. Unto who? <laughs> you got to show yourself Not because somebody looking at you. <laughs> I remember coming up. We had a Bible set on the, the uh, in my grandma's house on a little dining table. It says two level. Big old Bible had a lot of, lot of big picture, pictures in it. I used to look through the little pictures, look at the, the pictures in the Bible. Hallelujah. But nobody sat down and read that Bible to me. <laughs> I thought it was a decoration. You just sit it there, wipe it off, and, and, and that was it. And we just sneak in there and look through it. But nobody sat down and read it to me. So you got to, this got to be something that you put to work. And to put it to work, you got to open it up to know what God wants you to do and how God wants you to do it. Thanks God, we, we got it. We're in troubled times. And, I, and it's going to take, and I, I'm saying that not to put you in fear, but I'm saying that so you trust God. I'm trusting God. We we seen in, in the pandemic, I'm closed down now, we seen in the pandemic how quickly food can disappear from the grocery store. And we thought we'd never see that in America. We seen how the whole economy change at a back. Yes. The whole economy changed. Just on one thing, a, a pandemic caused everything to turn upside down. But you know who didn't turn upside down? The ones trusting God. If everybody else turned upside down, we're going to be right side up. Trusting God. What? <laughs> yeah. What David say? What David tell y'all? I never Never seen the righteous forsake, nor his seed begging bread. Huh. David, he didn't put that in there for just for him to sound good. He put that in there for me to read it, for you to read it. So we, we don't have to worry about everything going on. God's going to make a way. He'll tell you when to buy, when not to buy. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we got it. I'm trying to get y'all. I'm trying to finish this lesson. Trust, go back and read, study your bed. But he asked him to he called on God when the world was going against him. You got to call on God. Hallelujah. When the world has said it predetermined what you're going to be, you got to call on God. Hallelujah. You're going to bless me. Know that God going to take care of you and, tr- and have faith in God. And know that the Holy Spirit going to lead and guide you to all truth. That he's never going to leave you nor forsake you. He's going to keep you from evil. And what he's not going to let you be grieved in the, in the blessing that you receive from God, in the blessings all around you. He's not that you're going to be grieved. He's going to hold you. He loves us. He loves us, saints. Hallelujah. Man, trust God. Hallelujah. Jonathan, trust God. Dominic, trust God. Elder, trust God. Mother Smith, trust God. Elder Park, trust God. Vicky, trust God. Mom, trust God. Hallelujah. Ray. Trust God. I'm trusting him too. Yeah. Amen. And he's going to yeah. deliver us. Thanks to God. Yeah. Praise God. He's going to keep us. He's going to keep us. He's, man, how can we go wrong? Everything else is up change. God stays the same. He's worried to God that we need to pray. You stop thinking about it, how much God um, blesses us and keeps us. Hallelujah. And we start looking back how a whole lot of things could have went a different way, but it didn't. And we hear, <laughs> my Lord, my God. That's why God said, uh, I'll praise him with everything that I have. David said, I, I got to praise him. I got to praise him. I got to thank God. 
Hallelujah, because I didn't have to be here today. There's a whole lot of things, thanks to God, that we take for granted when we wake up in the morning. Didn't have to wake up. As it, as, we, as I'm getting older, I understand what the old people start saying. Man, I'm glad to see another day. I'm glad God woke me up in my right frame of mind. I'm glad, because I never thought about it. What about the right frame of mind? Man, I tell you, now that I'm, up, yeah, I know what he's talking about in the right frame. People my age are forgetting who they are. People my age don't know who they are and when, where they at. Hallelujah. And my God wakes me up <laughs> to another day that he created in my right mind. No aches, no pains. Hallelujah. I got to praise him. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I'll go through this day now. I might pick some aches and pains up through the day for the things I do. But when I wake up first thing in the morning, I'm, I feel fresh. <laughs> Amen. 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 So I truly thank God. I hope y'all got something out of the, the lesson. Amen. That we've discussed today. Uh, remember, uh, focus on what you're becoming. And what and I'm saying that focus on what God is making you. Not what man say you are, but what God is making you. Focus on that. That keep your eyes focused on that. And and know who you are in God. And I think you'll you will, will be a whole lot better off. And let's get the word out. Let's let's tell people about Jesus. I know we got different 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 places, but we going. It's, it's easy to strike up a conversation nowadays because everybody looking for answers. Man, all you gotta do is say, "Man, this is, looks get hard time." Man, it's all oh, dead. Lay all everything out. So all you say, "Whoo, man, it's hard times out here." <laughs> And the people in that Walmart will say, Whoo, I agree with you. Man, things, things are looking rough. Mm -hmm. Now that gives you what? <sighs> let me tell you. I know this is rough, but let me tell you about the man named Jesus. <laughs> let me tell you about uh, a man that loves you, who died for you, that he can turn it around for you. <laughs> Great God. I mean, I'm getting solid again. I can feel it coming. Amen. So I <laughs> truly thank God. Amen. Saints of God. Truly, we are blessed. We are some blessed people. Amen. And and we don't have to be grieved in the in the blessings God gave us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I just uh, know we're after eight. Anybody we 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 still got plenty of time according to the books. Amen. So anybody got anything they want to say or any comments they want to make? Or uh if Jonathan, if you want to talk about the how you feel after your baptism, uh praise God, you're still holding on and trusting God. I know the enemy attacking you, but trust God. Don't understand when you you've been baptized. And you got to get the process and get that, get, get it, get all that God wants you to get. Amen. I want you to, to study the Holy Ghost. I want you to see the power that God has given you and, and, and know that you got it. And don't let nobody tell you you don't have it. You got to start seeking God. Study the word. Amen. To know that God is, is forming something inside of you as he formed in inside of all of us. Amen. 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 My comments. Let, let me say one thing that um, the young man that you spoke about, Ibez. Yes, sir. Uh, how did he know God? Uh, I'm curious. We know God through his word and the power of the Holy Ghost. How did uh, Ibez know? I mean, when, did God speak to him you know, personally? I'm sure he didn't have a Bible. Uh, he had no, I don't I, I, I don't think he had a Bible either, but I believe that he turned to God because of the, the, the people had stereotyped him in that he was a man who was going to bring sorrow. And all he knew that the tribe that he came from, the Canaanites, they uh, helped uh, the Israelites uh, get into this. So they, they knew the Ken, when they came into the, the promised land, the Canaanites came with the Israelites. So they knew about this God. And I think that Jabez didn't have no option. He the world didn't want him, so he had to turn to that God, and he turned to that God and 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 prayed. I don't. It doesn't tell me how he got to know who God is, but from what I'm saying, the option that he had from the world, the tribe he came from, helped Israel get into the the promised land, and so they knew who this God of Israel was. And his option was, I tr I trust this God rather than what the world is dictating to us. My I'm point is that. The, the saints of old operated in God. And the Bible tells us, the New Testament tells us to contend for the faith of the saints of old. Yes. So we got to operate by faith. 
because God isn't talking to us. We know that he is our presence, present help. The Jabez, hallelujah, God, operated, and I was just wondering how did he operate without the Holy Ghost? Uh, did he operate by faith, or did he operate by what he heard, and he operated on what he heard, the word? We hear, we hear, but we look and see it this day and time, we see so much temptation. We see so many uh, um, words that's contradictive to the Bible. And, you know, Bible don't really mean that. And this is why I thank God for the Holy Ghost this day and time to lead and guide me in all truth. Now, Jabez didn't have that. Holy, the saints of old in the biblical Bible didn't have that. And I'm just glad I was in this day and time. Because I would have fell by the wayside, and I'm convinced I would have fell by the wayside in the Old Testament. But because of the Holy Ghost that abides within me, and temptation is on every hand. And I, my prayer is, Lord, help me to help myself. And, you know, I, I'm praying for other people, but at the same time, you know, it's a war going on inside. Yes, yes. And, then, and I, it's a, this day and time is a big war. Eve looked at the tree, Adam and Eve looked at the tree and look good, and was something to be desired. We see this day and time, things look good, and it is to be desired. And we can take our eyes off of Christ, hallelujah, God, and with all that money that you can get by the lottery, it'll take your mind off of Christ. So I, my thing is, the saints of old contend for the faith that they had. Hallelujah, God, saints of old. And I don't think it was talking about the biblical. I don't think they're talking about this day and time, the, the Holy Ghost, but I think it was talking about those folks who, like Samson, like Abraham, and those of old. So we got faith. And I think about Paul on the boat. So don't, don't, don't jump, don't, don't worry about it. But Paul was operating That's on right. faith. And faith is something hard to operate on if you don't have the Holy Ghost. People say they believe. You know, when the man pulled the gun out, you know, where's your faith? Hallelujah, God. To God be the glory. Let me be quiet. Enough of Amen. 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 I don't think we have to go all the way back to the biblical days. In no. our heritage, we have people that couldn't read the Bible, but they trusted God. Yeah. They used to sing them songs down in the, in the, in the you know, cotton field. Yeah. Swing low. So they were trusting God. Amen. Trusting God. So all we got to do is, is, is what did Paul say about them? Uh, I'm telling you, uh, we got this worshiping people to the unknown God, had a sign that said to the unknown God. Yeah. <laughs> my Lord, my God. Let me tell you about it. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, we, got to, we got to trust God, as that Proctor just saying. We got to have faith. Don't see him. Don't know him. Mm -hmm. He ain't gonna be. He ain't gonna be standing beside. Him, but we know he's there. He is there. And we had the Holy Spirit on his side that walk our faith. But oh, right, go ahead. Anybody else? I don't keep on talking. Yeah. Anybody? Nobody. Must All be. right. Praise God. Amen. Bye. No, I ain't nobody. There. I think everybody's good at the right. Congratulations, God. Amen, Brother Jonathan. Congratulations and welcome to the family. Well, thank you very much. It's nice to be here. Just taking it all in and processing everything. Bless your heart. All right. Praise God. Amen. Amen. All right. Elder, you want to, Mother Smith, you want to dismiss us? Thank you, Lord, for the word. Thank you, Father. Father, we just bless and praise your holy name, Lord. We look to you, you Jesus, you are the author and the finisher of our faith. We've heard your word tonight, Lord. Yes. Let those words sink into our hearts, Lord, that we'll not just be hearers of the word, but we'll be doers of the word. I ask, Lord, that you protect each and every individual on this call tonight, that you will take us to higher heights and deeper depths, that we will yes. come to a greater understanding of who you are. Jesus. Father, we live in a country that professes to be Christian, but we don't see the representation of Christ. Let well, us not be people who walk around saying we know God, but let us be people who show 
That, but yes, you said by this year, you know, men know that you are my disciples, the love that you have one for another. Yes. He said, Lord, we be a light unto the world. We be a city set yes. upon a hill. Lord, let us rise up and be what you called us to be. Father, yes. people are dying, as Bishop said, every day. They're going into a burning hell, never to return. God, we don't want to stand before you. And you say to us that we fail to do what you call us to do. Help us, Father, each and every one, no matter what stage we're in in life, no matter what place we are in our spiritual growth from the newest baby Christian to the oldest one on this call, God. Help us to look yes. inside and to know who we are and call on you for help. Because we can't do it of ourselves, but we can trust you. As Bishop said, we trust you. We believe your word and we stand on your promises. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your word. Thank Hallelujah. You. Thank you for your word.